If you own a business, you're thinking about starting a business uh, or anything in between, one of the important pieces of that business is going to be your invoicing platform. Because if you can't get paid from your clients and you're not sending them bills, you don't really have a business <laughs> or you have a real headache trying to figure it all out and deal with it. And people don't want to pay you unless they have an easy way to do it. So you are probably rattling through your head. And anytime you're setting up a business, this becomes one of the sticking points because you become very dedicated to whatever platform you're on. You become entrenched in it. It becomes part of your workflow. So there's a lot of thought that should go into this. And I wanted to throw this out there that this system that I found is pretty amazing and it's open source and it's really inexpensive if you wanted to have them host it. So uh, I don't know how I didn't find it sooner or stumble across it sooner, being that I'm a big open source advocate. But I, when I did find it, uh, I was taken back at the quality of this program. So we're going to talk about Invoice Engine today. Invoice from anywhere, get invoice from anywhere, get paid from everywhere. Uh, I like that as a slogan. Uh, leading open source platform, really, I don't even think they are competitors in this space uh, that are at the level they're at. I've looked around at some of them, and one of my problems of a lot of these invoicing platforms uh, that are open source is they're just kind of hokey. Um, they just don't feel complete, or they have lots of like you can tell it's everything feels like a work in progress. This, on the other hand. After testing it, um, because we've been looking at updating our own internal system and uh, doing what these people are doing, and we scrapped it. The, they have done a better job than uh, ours. We're actually going to be working, hopefully, in the future with them on some feedbacks uh, for adding a few more features. But the feature set they have is extremely complete, and that's what we're going to cover today is kind of give you a uh, top-to-bottom approach. I have a sign-up link, uh, so you can sign up for a free account. Uh, it'll be in the description below here, so you can just click that, which is, it, it brings you right to a page. It just has your fill information in. There's no credit card necessary. I love that for sign-ups because... Uh, new strange companies don't get my credit card. <laughs> That's uh, what I, if I want to test your product, holding my credit card is not how I want to test it. Maybe I like it, maybe I won't. I have no problem paying if I like your product, but uh, asking me for my credit card just so I can look at things, eh, they don't do that. So that makes me very happy. So let's just jump into uh, actually doing the review here and show you how it looks. All right, first I will cover pricing. The pricing is really simple free forever. So it's not even really a trial. Uh, you can get up to a hundred clients in here for professional invoices, uh, you branding and custom logo. We're going to be playing with the free version uh, for most of this demo because I have, we've migrated our, our uh, platform to this, so I can't play with our system internally um, for you, but I will show you some of it so you can see what it looks like uh, with populated with heavy amounts of data. We have over 6,000 clients we imported into this system. So in case you're wondering about scale on this thing, uh, we imported clients, we imported uh, histories and invoices invoices and everything, it, it works wonderful. So it's nice, fast, and snappy. Even the searches with 6,000 clients are a couple of keystrokes away. So uh, here's all the features and that you get. I'm not going to read them all to you, uh, but because we're, we're going to cover them. Uh, then you have the pro version, which you do get a 14-day free trial of this, which is kind of cool in case you don't like it. But all this does is remove like the 100 client restriction, add a few more features. Um, it adds a, just a handful of little uh, things like attaching uh, PDFs to the client emails, and I'll cover how that works. It's kind of interesting is you don't have to, you can send them just a link to the portal uh, instead of that, but they give you some more options in here. And then they have an enterprise one uh, where you can choose how many users you have and you get like the whole multi-additional user setup because most of this is single user. But if you're a freelancer uh, doing any type of design work or even really anything, construction work, any service-based work, this is a good system for that. Uh, where this is not a system for you, if you're going, hey, will this run my retail store with a scan gun and everything else? No, that's not what this is. This is a web-based uh, invoicing system and somewhat CRM system for following up with your clients and sending them bills for the work and services you offer. Uh, but it's not like a inventory system that you scan guns. Just so just clear that up. If that's what you were looking for, sorry, this review, you may find it interesting, but it's probably not a fit for what you're doing. You need something different for that. Okay. Enterprise, like I said, they also have the ability to add attached third-party files to invoice some quotations, and uh, they got to sign up for that. Now, I mentioned open source, and you're like, Tom, you haven't said anything about open source here. Well, let's jump over to GitHub. 
you can, and they have instructions on this, you can completely self-host this. So that's really cool. This is uh, a Linux backend. If you want to get to the technical details of it, it's uh, built, built on uh, Laravel, which is a really cool platform uh, for the framework that they built this on. It's extensive. You can see all the source code. By the way, these guys know how to do code. Uh, my friend did some code auditing on it before we brought it in-house because we're actually using a self-hosted version. And uh, he was impressed till after looking through the code on it. He goes, okay, these guys actually structured everything right. And active-wise, wow. If you are into, and I'll just show you over here, uh, feature requests, just all kinds of things. These guys reply very, very quick to anything in there. I've had a question. I actually solved it myself. Uh, some things that occurred, but I created the problem playing around with the code. But these guys, even in that category, immediately responded to me. So I'm really impressed with their uh, interaction. They are highly, highly active in their forums or highly active on GitHub. Uh, so they're iterating fast and they have update processes. So that's that being said, the back end of, these, um, of this system is outstanding. And if you want to self-host this, you can, but I will warn you because you're building a web-facing application, do it securely, do it right. So uh, think about that before you decide to self-host. And if you don't want to deal with any of the self-hosting things that are involved in setting it up and all the things you have to maintain, you can completely uh, just use theirs for $8 a month and not have the headache. Let's talk about a few of the things uh, that are in here because the integrations are really interesting. So they support all the major uh, payment gateway integrations. So we're actually using PayPal so people can pay our invoices. We just like it. It's simple. But they support Braintree, which is the PayPal company for if you have recurring service fees. Let's say you're like a, you have a hosting company and you want recurring fees. You can actually set up a whole Braintree recurring system on that. Auto invoicing. They support Stripe, GoCardless, Authorize.net. So these are the big ones. Um, and they have 40 plus. So this is they support for international stuff. Just a lot of different things in here uh, for payments, which is important because now you have all the... Uh, payment options to make it easy for whatever you may already be using and you can integrate with them. And they have some kind of uh, generic API so you could work with whatever payment system. Uh, if they have like a, a standard interface, you could configure that and make it work. So pretty cool they have that. Um, they do have a desktop app for the time tracking, which I think is interesting. I've played with it. I like doing it in the web interface, but in case you're wondering, they have Windows, Mac, and Linux uh, support, so they support all three major platforms. And it's basically like a simple portal uh, that for the time tracking module, which we'll talk about, and it integrates into yours. Uh, that's kind of neat. They also have phone apps, and the phone apps are kind of cool. I'm not... I uh, I don't hate on them, but I find with using the web interface. As a matter of fact, because their system is friendly uh, on mobile, you can just use the mobile uh, on your phone and it works. So just throwing it out there. But we we played around. The phone app's okay. Uh, maybe we'll dig into it in the future, but they do have it. So they do have that as an option. So if you're on-site at a client, you can just pull up the app and send them a bill, and they can pay the bill, and uh, you'll see the workflow. All right, so that's enough talking about this. Uh, by the way, they have great documentation, and they're always adding to this. Uh, I kind of like living online documents because as the uh, as they add features or change things, they just update this, so you always have the most current features uh, listed in here. And by the way, in the self-hosted, they have, uh, if you are going to do it this way, they have lots of uh, guides they link to. So Debian, uh, CentOS, um, Ubuntu, Apache, they have a Docker file, uh, Soft Delicious installer if you wanted to put it right into your uh, back end of your website. So lots of options here, lots of detail, and uh, I'm I'm impressed with it. So they have you know even walkthroughs on debug. So it's not like they're just trying to push you into host it in their cloud. They give you here's all kinds of stuff. Um, PHP fatal errors to leading bootstrap cache services. I mean, they, there's a lot of information in there. So if you are wanting to host this yourself, absolutely go ahead. Um, they have all the stuff in there. So anyways, they have all of uh, all that. So let's jump into what the system looks like now. All right. Once you've signed up, uh, app.invoiceninja.com dashboard is where we start at. This is for the um, free sign up one. Like I was, I'm using the free one here. And we're going to run through the settings. By the way, uh, just so you know, like the way these collapsible menus and stuff like that, the way they've done all this, oh, it's, it's just, it's kind of pretty. Um, now that we've been using it for a while on, on our side in production, it, it's 
the intuitive design and the layout, really nice. We did some customization to ours because um, I have the source code, so I played around with it a little bit. But we're modifying CSS and things like that. They have some options for that, which is really cool. Um, so the first thing you want to do is it go through, set up your company. I called it uh, LTS Demo Invoicing. You can put your ID number, VAT number, if you are if you have value-added tax, depending on country codes you're in. Uh, here in the U.S., we have something similar. Uh, you can uh, just kind of fill out, you know, if you want what industry you're in, tech or whatever, and uh, upload your logo. Set some default payment types, like the default way you want to get paid, if that's PayPal. And like I said, this this list is pretty extensive. Uh, this isn't where you set up the pay. This is just so you can set up a default payment for when people are paying you. Uh, default payment terms. Whenever you create a new client, a fill in both payment terms and your default uh, billable rates. Uh, so that way, if you don't, you can override this on a per client basis, but you can just have defaults fill in. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they also have custom options for invoice due dates, uh, things like that. So you can customize that more. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and save. And let's say here's the logo. So that's all set up there. So this is your, your basics, giving your company a name and things like that. User details. This is where I set my own user up. I really like they have two-factor in here. I don't have it turned on for this demo, but we have it turned on in ours. That's really awesome. Uh, so that's really cool. So uh, background dark on the sidebars. This is kind of a neat thing they have. So if I hit save, if you want it light colored, I like it dark. Uh, so like I said, there's little tweaks here and there. I think it's just kind of novel that they have built in there. So when it slides out, it's dark. And I usually leave this open, so we'll leave it open for now. Localization. Uh, it, what If you are in many other countries, they have a great support. Matter of fact, it's something else when we're looking at code. They do a really good job of all their language files. Uh, so you can customize this in two different languages and things like that. So that's great. Um, I'm in the US, so we have US dollar. We got the time zones in here. I'll set my time zone, date format. I, uh, there's some debate about this, of course. We do it wrong, apparently, here. I never thought about this until I got older. And yeah, we have our own date formats here, so it's different. So date format, date time format, however you want things to display on there. Or you can do 24-hour team and then decide if you want Sunday or Monday to be the first day of the week and the first month to be there. But hey, kind of cool. So uh, you can customize that. Then we're going to go down to online payments. Uh, this is where you can set up the token billing and uh, opt in, opt out. So if you're doing some of the auto bill for people, uh, you can enable gateway fee charges. Uh, this is surcharges based on the way people pay. So that's definitely an option. Uh, whoops, I'm going to save this real quick. So turn off gateway fees, hit save. We're going to add a payment gateway. And here's the list. Now, uh, here's the more options where you get in the advanced one. So here's like your primary ones are custom. Then you got more options and you can choose from all these things here. Uh, and I'll show you what happens when we uh, add a gateway and PayPal. PayPal Express being one of the easiest ones. Uh, you go here and if you click here, it takes you right to your uh, API signature key. So signing up for PayPal Express is probably one of the easiest ones to do if you're getting started. You get an API username, password, and signature. And when you click here, it'll bring those. You also have a test mode where you can kind of like demo things so you can play with the payments and make sure they're working before you go in there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we had no problem setting that up. So that actually was uh, really easy to do. Leave. Tax rates. Uh, this is kind of cool too because you can enable specific tax for an invoice. We're going to enable specific tax for line items. And if you're in a place that has uh, specific tax rates, they have that here. So you enable specific uh, or specifying a second tax rate where you have secondary tax. We're happy that we only have one tax. Uh, include taxes in the cost. You can just do this. And once the invoice is created, you can't change these. So it only affects future invoices in case you started creating a invoice and then change this part on there. Uh, then you can add tax rates. And we're going to uh, sales is what we have here in Michigan. It's at 6%. Save, but customizing options based on where you live, you're going to that's going to vary. Products. Um, automatically convert product prices to the client's currency. That's kind of cool too. If you're an international client, it's got this as an option. So you can do currency conversions. Um, it's in there. Now, autofill products, I like this. Auto update products. 
This you may want to turn on in the beginning. What this means is it lets you freeform in a product when you're doing an invoice, when we get to that. But what it'll do is uh, you can start creating those. And as you create it and build out for a client, it can also create the product in there. And then you can turn this off later so you, you don't mess any of them up. Um, I actually like it off because I like to build my products uh, individually. And I don't want every new product uh, that we use creating a new product. Every new line item on an invoice creating a new product entry. So I'll show you how that works when we cover it, but um, it, it does have an option to auto do them. We have a lot of users, uh, I have a lot of staff using it, and we freeform a lot of things. We don't want it updating all the time. Notifications. Email me when an invoice is sent, viewed, paid. This is actually really cool. Um, and it has an analytics key for that. So what it will do is um, give you a notice whenever someone does any of those actions. You get an email, which is great for follow through because you sent that invoice. Did they see it? I don't know. Okay, cool. They viewed the invoice. Uh, you want to know if you're using it yourself or if you have like an auto invoice, you may want an email every time it's sent. Uh, you want to know when a quote is approved. They have an entire for your workflow process and you can get notices in your email going, hey, your quote was approved. That person viewed it. And of course, that's always exciting if you're in business. Uh, yes, they approved it. Uh, what's even better is when you get that email that they're paid. That's my favorite email. Um, and it allows your clients to do that. So you'll send them a quote and a process. They can approve it, and then the payment option can come up in there. So I'm going to save this. This is amazing that they built this in. They have a data import, and you're probably thinking other places too. But they also have a data export. And they have a big, I mean, if you're coming from one of the other payment platforms, uh, FreshBooks, Invoiceable, InvoicePlain, Nutcash, uh, Ronin, Stripe, Wave, Zoho, you have options to import from them. So let's say we had a FreshBooks file. You can then pull in and upload the FreshBooks format. You can have uh, Invoiceable, Ronin, the Stripe, whatever you're using, uh, you can pull in a lot of that information or just a CSV and they have a whole matching system. Uh, this was made it very easy for us to import all 6,500 of our clients into the system without any hassle. It was actually really easy to do. Um, so I like that a lot. If also let you uh, bring in, if you have a list of products that you have on your service, you can bring those in there. Uh, invoices, it's got a nice matching system so you can do alignment of all the fields. It reads the header row and you drag and you just, yeah, it's really, I, I'm, I don't think I have a file I can easily show you without a customer data in it, but trust me, it works. They have an instruction in that. And then, of course, exporting data. This is really cool. You can drop things back into a spreadsheet and download your data out. Uh, I like this a lot. It's a CSV, XLS, or JSON file. And you can then export it and import it. Matter of fact, one of the nice things is you can, if you uh, source as a JSON file here, if you started playing with it self-hosted and wanted to move back and forth or take your uh, self-hosted instance and go, I want to be able to have it internally, you can do that. Or you just go, I just want a copy of all the data that I have and you want to use their payment system. I like the fact that I can get a copy of all the important things in here and keep a local copy of everything in here. So that's really cool. Leave this page. Uh, plan status modules that you have turned on. Now, uh, because I have the self-hosted, I have a couple things that are extra because they're kind of like beta things that they have, which I think is really cool that I get those. Uh, but take that in stride because they're beta things that I'm giving them feedback on to be able to <laughs> um, uh, fix those things. So there's a couple features like uh, that they've added. So their roadmap is great. They actually, they are very open and follow their blog. They're they have a roadmap, they're uh, constantly adding features. So the system's not just here it is, it's looking for feedback, give them some feedback, suggest things, and it ends up in uh, next versions of this. Uh, this is kind of cool too, PDF seedings. You'll see how the live preview works. Uh, purge data, delete account. So if you say, I've played with this, I don't like it, I want everything gone, you have that ability to do that and purge it here. Uh, this also lets you turn off modules, let's say you don't use the expense and vendors. So if you uncheck these, they will disappear from the side over here. Invoice settings. Uh, this isn't the pro plan, so it doesn't give you a lot to customize it, but it does let you come up with, and this is where a lot of the customizations. If you want your invoice numbers to be based on client ID and then a counter, uh, for example, and what we actually did, this was really handy for us, was that we pulled in over 20,000 some odd invoices. So we wanted to use the invoice counter and put it in there. And then we had it to start at 
So we knew the next system, you know, started after those 21,000 invoices. So our invoice numbers still just flow just like they did before. So no need to uh, spend a bunch of time like okay, we're now moving to a new series of invoices. Matter of fact, other than the way the invoice layout changed from our old system, because it looks so much nicer in this one, uh, the invoice numbers followed through, and we even imported all of our unpaid invoices uh, into the system. So it, it, it didn't disrupt our workflow or have to re-index everything, because when you pull all the data in, maybe from another invoicing system, you can fill in the invoice numbers um, because they don't use them as a unique identifier in the system. They, they have to be unique, but they don't, uh, you can import invoice numbers is short of that. Uh, it also lets import quote numbers. Now, the kind of neat from the back end perspective, uh, invoice number and quote number, they actually are in the same table. The difference between an invoice and a quote um, really comes down to status of it, whether or not it's something you quoted someone or it's converted to an invoice. Uh, that's actually a really nice feature from both a programming standpoint and a management standpoint because they look the same. So your quote, your flow becomes very easy because they're pretty much the same thing. You can also set client ID numbers. Uh, they don't do this by default. We like client ID numbers. And uh, you can pattern this the same thing uh, counter year user ID so you can come up with special for, uh, formats for them. We actually just like counter. And when I say we have 6,500 uh, clients, this is actually something we did. So we took the, the up to the last client ID that we imported and it did import all of our client IDs and go right back into this pattern. We're able to line those fields up. And then we started this at the next client number. So without missing a beat, it, all of our client IDs flow through fine, which is a really nice, like I said, it was very, from us moving to one system to another uh, was really easy because this is one of the tags we use. I've, I've had previous videos where I've shown people and talked about that, uh, where I'm using client ID numbers as we use just little stickers that we put on things with a pricing gun with their client ID number for all the little things that come in because we are using this for our retail store as well in terms of servicing uh, computers that come in and for our businesses. Now, uh, credit numbers, uh, they have a crediting option here. It's not something we use. We generally don't have a lot of people that have credit, but we have a few, so it's kind of cool that they have that in here. Uh, padding, recurring invoices, get an R in front of them. I like that. Um, you can change this, though. This is customization. So when you do the uh, recurring billing, it can just add an R so you know they were auto-generated recurring invoices. Uh, number of zeros for the padding. And what that is is so instead of having uh, client 63, you would have client 0063. So you can actually control the padding on here, uh, customize that. You can reset counters if you want, uh, if there was a reason you wanted to. I actually don't like it to be reset, but if you want to reset, for example, annually, so all of your uh, counter numbers start over, that is an option. Yeah, reset the invoice and quote counters. Uh, custom fields. This is a neat feature to me. I was uh, really happy they added this in here. So you can say field label, and we're just going to call it field. This is some test field. Well, that's way too big. So we use a wiki. So I'll use that. That's actually something we did add. So I'll put in wiki here. What this does is shows up in the client file, and you can do two of them. Um, if you leave blank, nothing shows up. If you leave it here, it creates an extra spot for you to put data for that client. So if you have some reference number that you want to use or some special piece of uh, string, it's not a real long field um, that you want to put in there, you can put that piece into each client file. And we'll get to that when we get to the client file. So that's pretty cool. Uh, invoice terms, invoice footer, quote terms. This is nice. You can just have this show up on all the footers. Uh, thank you, whatever. Uh, this is a test of the footer. And then you can have, uh, you know, must be paid, uh, whatever. You can put these terms in there and the same with the quote. And these just were text that shows up at the bottom of every quote. Now, you can customize this on a per quote basis, but these are like the default ones that can show up already. And then you can go ahead and do that. And the same with these custom fields. Uh, there's field labels for product fields, invoice fields, uh, surcharge labels, company fields, uh, contact, uh, just a lot. So client, contact, company, um, and invoice just more customization and you don't have to know any uh, technology at all to do that which i think is really cool you don't really have to go hey i need to know this or need that it just it's all built in uh, let's go ahead and hit save oh this is i think an advanced feature by the pro plan so it won't let well let me do this
yeah, you have to have the pro one to uh, uh, set that, which is fine. I'm just going to say it still recognizes the change on there. Uh, invoice customization, it's extensive. Uh, you can really, once you're on the pro plan, customize invoice. So I'll actually show you that in our portal system, how we did ours. Uh, client portals, these are really cool too. You get this with the pro version. Like I said, eight bucks a month for the pro version. It's not exactly a, if, if you have a business that's not unable to cover the $8 a month, you should, yeah, that's, it's really not much money. Uh, you can password protect the, uh, generate automatically the client portal and how the client login works and put a password. So every time you create a client, it creates a password for that client to be able to log into the portal. Um, yeah, the portal doesn't necessarily need a password, and I'll talk a little bit how that works. It's up to you, because all it really does is allows them to view quotes and things like that. But you got to remember, it's not guessable. So you couldn't guess my client portal because it creates a unique nonce for each client. Uh, it's a really long string that when you send it in an email, it converts to the client portal for that session. It uses session keys. So it's as you can see how it has like an account login key. It generates one of these for each time you send the link. That's how it tracks. So um, kind of cool. So uh, buy now buttons is kind of neat. So you can have people buy stuff. We're still playing with this. I haven't sent even up, but it's a feature in there. Uh, so you, people can come in, log in and buy services from you. So if you have a client there on your portal, go, hey, I just want to buy this add on uh, service and, you know, you can sell them more stuff. Templates and reminders. Oh, this is really fun. You can build how all your templates for telling people for quote email, payment emails, payment received. We have a nice thank you notice every time someone uh, gets a payment from us and it sends them a nice thank you for doing business with us, tells them like you paid with check number this because we do a lot of B2B work so we have a lot of checks mailed to us. Um, but if they pay on PayPal, they same thing, it's a notice that goes out to them. Thank you for doing business with uh, Lauren Systems. Here's the quote that you want. We have a nice custom uh, for this with an email signature so when you send the quote or an invoice email, it's all about uh, personalization. And they give you, you click here and it tells you these are all the different view link, view button, payment link, payment button. So you can customize the email that gets sent out however you want uh, with your email signature, with your account. And it fills in names. It's like a form letter. So thank you, uh, client, whatever. So pretty neat that they have that in there. And we use it. It definitely works great. Uh, credit cards and banks. I haven't really used this feature, but they do have a way to track your expenses and stuff like that. Um, this is just weird. Uh, they have a data visualization and it's interesting because you can look at uh, clients and products. I don't have anything in here. It's in a pro feature. Uh, it's it's kind of neat. It'll break down percentages for what you did. It's kind of novel. Uh, it's not to me the most useful thing, but it's there. It's kind of neat. Maybe someone will play with it. This is a really neat system we haven't really started using, uh, but we're looking at it. They have a lot of automation options to connect it uh, using Zapier. So you can have things like create invoice clients from Gmail, add a new invoice ninja client to your mailing list. So if you have mailing lists, as you add the clients, they can go into your mailing list. You can have Slack notifications. And this is something we might, we'll just say we're still playing with this part. I haven't really configured it, but it's cool that they have these integrations. So you can say, hey, I want every time a payment comes in and just throw it in Slack. So even uh, you, you can get the email, but a lot of us are using Slack. I, we love Slack, uh, how we do a lot of inner office communication. So it's kind of nice and we can have it land in a spot so we can look through the Slack history and go, okay, I see the invoice was viewed or a payment was received. That's a cool integration you can have there. And I've got uh, documentation on how to do this uh, with all the different features. So you can, there's a lot of integrations that are options here and more can be added. User management. Um, uh, not much you can do here without the pro version, but in our system, for example, uh, it will let us add, remove users. A couple side notes on that. Um, if you add users to the system, you can't reset their password. They have to request the password reset link. So if one of your users, if you're using uh, the enterprise version where you have multiple user options, you can do this. You can re have a password reset, but by the way, it will... Um, it didn't. I didn't see an option for you to do it as the admin. They have to hit the button and request it. You can delete and change users and lock users out and things like that. Uh, you just don't really have the option to uh, reset their password, which I thought was uh, not a bad idea. Uh, they don't have to bother you for it, at least, because if they forget their password to log in, uh, which hopefully they don't, they do it. But uh, if they forget their two-factor, I'm not sure the process on that because I didn't see a way to reset two-factor. Um, 
which is good too. I'm glad they don't have a way to reset it. Thank you. Um, that's a security problem. It should be if someone lost their password under two factor and can't get in, good because you don't want some easy way around that. And uh, so emailing a password reset and having two factor will not bypass the two factor. Like I said, that's that's really important to me. Um, I'd rather see someone locked out where you got to contact higher levels of support because there is a way from from the self hosted version, for example, you would actually have to go into the database and do it. Um, and I'm fine with it being that hard to do because it should be that hard to do. The other option is delete the user and reset them back up. Um, so definitely options there. Uh, and on to user management a little bit. Yes, they have some granular permissions. They're not extensive, uh, so but you can lock. You can do some locking on there. All right, we're going to jump over to the dashboard and uh, move into uh, some of that, and then we'll walk through the, the the process of adding a client and making it all happen. All right, now on to the dashboard. Yes, it's blurry because this is our live dashboard. Um, with all the information on here, I'm just not going to share all my payment information. Sorry, guys. Uh, but I can tell you that there's a lot in here. So with our uh, things I can tell you about, um, we have just a ton of invoices. Like I said, we're at invoice. Uh, the last invoice was two, uh, 20798 so we're just under 21,000 invoices in here and uh, the system works great. Now on the dashboard view, uh, the blurry chart that you see is showing some of the revenue information um, and things like that. So you can look at your daily uh, revenue in, revenue out, um, and expenses if you're using it to track any of those and they show up across there. And then you have little menus here to say, just go me in it. What it, these menus do is change the view of that dashboard to be how many days this year, last year, custom range, uh, this month, or just last 30 days. The nice thing like this month, if you're trying to set revenue goals per month, you can watch the month get built out across there and you can see if you're hitting those goals for money in and money out. So it helps uh, with some of the sales things that help a lot of business with dashboards. So you log in, you look at it, you go, okay, have we, have we invoiced out enough and hit those revenue goals and things like that. So that's what it looks like populated. Uh, now we're gonna move over to the demo one again so we can actually show you what it uh, it looks like without the blur over it all right uh, now that it's not blurry you have your activity recent payments invoices past due upcoming invoices I don't have any quotes in here but it'll show the same thing for the quotes so let's add a product real quick before we add well we can add a client add a product so we'll add the product real quick and show you how that works so product and um, we'll call it just service or uh, let's call it uh, design work and you can have notes of what goes in there you can leave these blanks we're going to leave that blank um, there's no tax rate on this the cost for design work is uh, 150 we measure things hourly so there's that one let's create a new product another one on site service and these being serious, and we charge, uh, let's say, 150 also for that to come out and do it. And we'll make it 200 an hour. Feeling expensive here. Our bill rate's not quite that high yet, but with inflation. So here's a couple of them, and let's do uh, one more product. All right, so I built a, a more complete product. So you have here load system, create volumes, uh, set up file sharing. You can put a cost on that and let's save. So now we have a couple different products we have here. Now let's start with adding a client. I have uh, myself in here, but let's actually add a new client. Now, the design consistency of this is really nice because you have just hit the plus here for a new client, or you can go new client here. And if you notice as you go through all of these, new product, invoice, new invoice, you kind of get the idea, enter payment. Uh, throughout the whole system, all the outside of the settings, everything's got a really nice design consistency. So if it's a pro new project, quote, credit, recurring, um, nice, nice way to do it. They actually have, uh, and you go through the help menu, they have keyboard shortcuts to take you to uh, these things. I forget all of them right now and they're not relevant. Uh, but you, you actually can navigate a lot of this with the keyboard, which is kind of cool too, and it's including a new client. And also when you have this expanded out, which I usually leave it, there's the add new client, new product, new that. So you can, from the other menu, let's go over here, we'll create a recurring invoice from right there. Go back over here and create a client. So now we can create a client or list all your clients. So here's a new client and uh, I got some stuff I'll paste in here. So we're, our new client is Dewey Cheatham and Howe for those of you that are fans of Car Talk, uh, if you remember that show at all. 
and this is an actual address in our city. So Troy, Michigan 48084. This is a real road. And uh, for those of you wondering, it's it's always, yes, there's plenty of jokes. It's even exit 69, uh, a big beaver road. That is the legit exit number for it. Um, we'll put in a fictional phone number here. Their website is probably going to be this. I bet this probably is a real website. Don't. Uh, well, so we'll put in DeweyCheatermanHow.com. First name. And um, I guess we should probably I'm gonna copy and paste because I'm too lazy to type all this. So he'll be Tom at that. Phone number. Put in our fictional phone numbers. All right, if they have an ID number or VAT number that can be in here. Um, those custom contact things, they have extra fields to show up under here with whatever labels you gave them with the same uh, link. So that is that option that you can add. Uh, we talked about this isn't the pro version, so that doesn't show up in there, but it does show up in ours. Uh, so there's that person. If we have more than one contact, let's add the second contact. And uh, he's going to be Ray at, and uh, why not? Same phone number, one digit up. You can set the payment rate. You can see it's grayed in and filled in, so it's got a default. Uh, show tasks in the client portal. We'll go ahead and say yes to that. Um, notes on this client, public and private notes. Uh, classify the client. Are they a four? I think they're a one to three person. I got two contacts here. Accounting and legal. Save. And yes, there is the uh, Google map, which I think this is cool. It integrates if you want to know right where these people are. And yes, that is a real address. It's at Big Beaver and Crooks. Hey, do we cheat and how? Why not be on Crooks uh, <laughs> off of Big Beaver? So I think it's kind of cool that this shows up on here. You can start seeing the invoices, payments, activity. The activity lists are really cool. I'm going to jump over real quick to our system. Now, something I'll show you here. We have, like I said, 6,000 clients. Watch this. I typed in test. Okay, now I can unblur it. It just indexed all of our clients that fast. I'm not running some incredible super server uh, that's super, super fast. It's reasonable, uh, but it, the system works really well for that. So when you pull up uh, this client, and this is just a uh, testing McTest face, it's the demo client whenever we have to test something inside of our system, um, it's, it's pretty cool because you can see payments, invoices, activity lists for everything that was done. So 5,000 paid, 5,000 deleted. Uh, it gives you a whole history of everything that was done with that client. Let me change it to, uh, whoops, deleted. Draft, active, and archived. And it can show you all the different uh, statuses for things in here so you can see an idea I think we have deleted invoices for this yes here's a bunch of them so this populates really fast we're going to do some of the demo here but it's just to show you real quick how they look when you're doing them and by the way uh, they don't currently have but it's on a roadmap a way to purge deleted it probably be an admin function so if someone tries to go through and delete one of the other staff members deletes an invoice they're still there they just don't show up on the revenue reports uh, but they they exist and you can always go find a deleted one, which is actually something I really like. I don't ever want to purge deleted um, because I, there's usually a reason I want to know a story of why they were deleted. And you can run reports to find things people deleted. And I want to know why they deleted them. Um, so that's just from a business standpoint. I like the fact that you can delete, but deleting them still makes them attached to that client. So you can go, wait a minute, why did someone delete these? Obviously, I don't question when we don't delete invoices for testing my test space, but that's the... Yeah, it's a nice feature. All right, so we've added our client and we want to invoice that client. Once again, kind of cool things. You can view a statement of this client for all the money they spent with you. You can edit the client or new task quote invoice. So uh, you can enter payment credit expense for this client. I like the menus are right there. And once again, I could start from here, it, it, whichever way you want to do it. So we'll go ahead and uh, say new quote. Now, first things I want to know is how many people. If you have a lot of contacts, you have to do some unchecking, but it does remember what who uh, is related to this. So this is only for, um, let's say, this one's going to go to Ray. It's a quote for something, design work. 
I'm just going to freeform him some design work. Pretty simple. Uh, we're going to set up a free NAS system. And that one, you notice how it fills in for us. And in real time down here, you're seeing the invoices being or the quote being built. So now the quote and the invoice, like I said, it's very much uh, very similar. And they have a few built in and on the free version. We can make it look like this, modern, plain, and more designs is takes you to let's buy the bold version. They also with the pro version give you a tool to customize and design your own layouts. They have a whole layout system so you can if you want design it. I kind of like the bold look. It looks pretty nice. Um, looks looks professional, but you can see it's automatically updating this in a little PDF below. So, and it puts this, if you're not paying, you uh, get the created by Invoice Ninja tagged to the bottom of all your funds. You don't get this, of course, with the self-hosted. And also something else you see here, it says public notes, private notes, terms, and footer. They would be default filled in when we went through setup or they show up here. Um, and you can just freeform them. And private notes, something about this client. And then we're going to do some public notes. Uh, this shows up on the invoice. And quote. And you can save this as draft. Now this is where, from your workflow, now I've saved this as draft. It's got an ID number, quote 001. Like I said, ours are following the invoice numbers, so they're much higher. Um, you can mark it as sent as in you physically gave it to them, or normally you're going to want to email it. Uh, please sign. Oh, I can't do it in a free version. So I'll go ahead and mar I'll go over to our version. So we have it in our system and I'll show you how you can do the quotes and we're going to use our test email text face one uh, so I can show you the email process on ours. But this is actually kind of a cool thing. So the other one I started from the client and created a quote, but you can fill in a quote. So uh, I'm going to blur out the other names that show up. You can actually, it finds that word in there, and I'm blurring out the other client names that have the word test in there because there's some companies that do prosthetics, so that they're actually in there. Um, but we can actually then click on it, and now it fills in for that uh, customer automatically. And if you wanted to edit that client or view that client, or if you noticed before I entered any of this, create new client, that's a nice thing. You can start with a quote and build out the client file without ever leaving the screen. So if we view this client, uh, it did pop up a new window, but yes, you can view a client from there. And actually, let's just make a change to the client. And when you do a change, I can actually go in and edit something about this client. And we're going to change like their payment terms and at 15, done. And now I just updated that client file. So that's actually a nice thing without leaving the screen. I can just go, okay, I found a uh, McTest face client, but I want to edit that client and go from there. So here's your quote valid, uh, blah, 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 all the information. Now let's fill in this. And we'll actually fill in one of our standard things we do. So we have like here, backup customer documents, uh, format data, and we want to email this as a quote. And you can see it building the quote here. I'll save it as a draft so it refreshes. So this is what the client will see. And then when you pull up the email option, Thank you for your interest in working with Lawrence Technology Services. We have a quote for the services. We appreciate a deposit of zero, zero dollars. Let's actually fix this. So nope, that isn't what I wanted to send. So we go here and I need a deposit of $40 to get started Started here. And I click on email quote. We'd like a deposit of blank to get started. Generally, a lot of the work we do that we're sending an email for requires a deposit. But you can then, if you want on a per quote basis, this is the default. Uh, that I let my guy send, but if you want to add something in here, and you notice how it says dollar sign account, dollar sign partial, uh, view button, view link, email signature, history of how many times it's been sent, and we have reminder emails that we've got template for us as well. So if you're using a pro version, you get all these features, uh, which is really cool. Um, I like it. It also does not have the right link at the bottom here uh, on purpose because I'm playing with it. But when we send it, I did this for uh, purposes of this demo, it will put the right link in there so they actually sends them a link. And then when they get the email, they get the client portal email uh, so they can see these quotes and stuff like that, which I'm going to pull that up next. So I'm going to mark it as send. I'm actually not going to send an extra email. So for those of you interested in the technical details, this is actually what the link they get in the email is. So it's uh, your portal name, 
index PHP client dashboard and a long unique key. So as you notice, I'm logged in incognito, so I'm not logged in at all to the in, in, Ninja invoice system. And this allows it to uh, view things. So this they can see their invoices, their payments, um, and things like that. You notice how it takes it out up here. So they just see this. Once they're logged in, it creates a session key that expires if they close this portal and try to open up again. So I think if I open this, I think it's the same browser session, so it'll work. But once you close the browser session, they lose it until they click the link in the email again. Now, this is the part where you can add a password to if you want. So they actually have to click the link, get a password, and log in. But the only thing they can do here is view their quotes and potentially approve them. So uh, this is what the client gets. They can look at it. Now, with the pro version, you can attach a PDF as well. Um, I kind of like when they view it in a portal. If you attach PDF, you don't know if they looked at it. When they click the link, you get a stat that they viewed this. Uh, they can download it so they can print it for their own records. Or we're going to go through approval process. So we'll approve this invoice. And it takes a second. It's going to think. Um, and then we're going to get a notice that it was approved. I, it may give an error because I'm uh, the way this is working right here, but you get the notice. Okay, it did work, um, even with that URL. And then you can actually click on pay now and it takes them right to the payment terms. So they can now pay that deposit that we asked for on there. And then they'll have an invoice that they can pay. So I can say pay now on this. And it's gonna take them over to PayPal, so I'm not going. And then we have on the invoices, unpaid. So now we went from, we had the quote. I can see that I approved this quote that we just created. Then we have our uh, invoices and it set an invoice date, due date based on that sent. And now they can click on this and pay it. And for some of our bigger clients, this is cool because there's so much going on with them. They can see the entire history and payments and everything that they've done in there. And we see that this is now converted. They have an active uh, viewed but not paid invoice with us now. So that kind of gives you the workflow and follow through of how that works. And like I said, I'm really impressed with the way this system can handle all of that. It's really, really clever. Uh, so you can see how the whole process and workflow does. So back to our demo client over here. Uh, so there's the quote and let's pretend the quote's approved. So we'll mark it as sent. We can list the quotes. There's our Dewey, Cheatham and Howe quote. Uh, here's an amount, we know it's sent. We can convert it to an invoice now because so we want to invoice them or bill them and then they would be able to pay it. So pretty straightforward. Uh, if they have a recurring invoice, they go, we like your service, we want to do it, and we want a new recurring invoice. Let's hit new invoice. There's our Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Who gets it? Remember Ray last time, we can actually tell to get each person. Um, and we're gonna say we wanna set up a uh, web hosting. And this is where you can freeform the products or put it in there. Um, Site 120, quantity one, there's no tax on that. And once again, we can turn it on for, uh, let them opt in and out of it, but we're gonna say always. Uh, start date, tomorrow morning, uh, by default it's set to 8 a.m. is when it sends out all your recurring invoices. Uh, you want this invoice to be, we said annual, so we're gonna set it to be annually, and boom. You can now hit email invoices or just hit mark ready, which means it'll tell you the next time it'll uh, the email will be sent on March 8th. The invoice will be emailed too, and that creates your recurring invoices. We use this a lot. This is how we do all of our managed clients and things like that. Set them all up on recurring invoicing. Um, this is kind of neat because you can't have people with an option to opt out or opt into billing. So you can bill them. They can then opt in to be auto billed. Uh, I just like it always. Just we bill them if they call us if they don't want billing anymore. Um, we interact a lot with our clients. If you have systems that you don't, you want them to be able to opt out of it. Um, you can add that as an option. Generally, you want to keep them in the billing system is my theory. Uh, once we have this, and we're going to go ahead and uh, leave because I don't care about creating this one. Let's go back over to our quote and invoice it. So we did this. We sent it. Convert to invoice. Great. Uh, it's in draft because it brought us to the invoice. So let me actually, uh, we can go back over here and click it. And we're gonna mark it as sent because we can't email it, but that means we sent them the invoice. Now they have it. Oh, by the way, if we go to view client and we can go to view their portal, here's their uh, total invoice, paid to date, their current open balance. So I can show you this portal in its total. Uh, they have one invoice. I don't know why. 
no, okay, no data in table. Maybe it's because I'm on the demo one. Um, so they know that they have an open balance with us. You can send that to them. So we'll go back over to invoices, sent. And we want to enter payment for that invoice. So this is just part of the workflow. It We typed in PayPal, so the PayPal is the default. But you can, of course, just change this out. Check. Check. I just wanted to quickly add that if they pay online via one of the invoice portals, such as PayPal, you don't have to enter the payment. It actually enters it for you and fills in the transaction ID reference. For example, because we use PayPal, it puts in the PayPal transaction ID in here. Put that in there. We do this right here for our business clients. This is the email receipt. That's back to the templates you can set up. And now you've closed out that client with, they now have a payment history. So there's a completed payment, completed job, kind of takes you through the process. Um, and if they had a credit because they overpaid for some reason, you can just easily add a credit and then apply the credit. So it does have an option for that. Uh, projects, uh, this is kind of cool. So we're going to create a, we'll actually delete this one. New project, client, Do Dewey Cheatham and how? Name of the project, new FreeNAS server. Due date, they would love that installed by the 15th. Budget hours, I'm thinking it's going to take uh, 50 hours of work. Uh, task rate, maybe you negotiated a different than the default, so you have an option to do that. So we'll, 50 hours, we'll go ahead and uh, throw that in there. All right, so now we have this project. Now the project needs some tasks. So first task, project producer, build the new server. Now, this is kind of cool. You can manually enter. I plan to start it at 940. I should be done by 11. Um, or you can just type in the hours. So let's actually change this. So then instead of 910 to 11, it's one hour. It's probably take us more than an hour to build it. So let's be a little bit more generous. Three hours. So awesome, save. Now, that's for this task. Now we've built this. Maybe it took more. We resume it later. It will actually then let you do that. So you can then jump back over to tasks. Let me delete these other ones so we only have one thing to deal with here. All right. So here's the build the new server task. Duration. Select. It's logged. So I have one more task in here. Client. Oops, free NAS server and uh, copy files to new server. We don't know how long that's going to take. We're just going to hit save. We're going to leave it, uh, leave it empty. And I'm going to go back over to tasks. So now this is logged. Duration here. Um, resume task, invoice task. Let's pretend we did it and we can actually invoice this particular task or just resume the task. But this does let you invoice that little piece of it. Now we also have, and I'm probably saying it wrong, Kanban, Kanban, ready to do. We'll move these to ready, ready. We'll actually move this one in progress and this one should be ready once this one's done. And this is kind of cool. So if you can list out all your tasks and projects, then build them out like this. I'll even throw them all on a calendar for you. So this does have some built-in project management so you can kind of flow through with what you're doing. And the client, um, let's pull up the client file. the client can see where you're at with the task. So they can actually go into their client portal links and say, oh, I see where they're at with the process. So if uh, you get annoyed by clients who call you, like, where's my website at? You're able to go through here and do that, which is really cool. So let's jump on down to the task real quick here. Um, this is kind of neat since now it says in progress backlog and this is all done through here, dragging it along. And that's tied to the project that's right here. And when we click the project, we also get a project dashboard and you can start doing this. Now, the only thing it doesn't really have is a lot of neat assignments for each person. So you don't necessarily have these cool lists of who's working on it. So it's kind of a basic project management, but especially for an independent, it works really good for that. So you definitely have that as an option in here. So copy files to new server that Tom spelled wrong. <laughs> it's in here. And uh, here's the one here. And you can also hit, this is where the resume task. So uh, let's actually invoice this task out. Invoice task. 
Mark sent, done. You notice how it all filled in based on the rate for that project. So it just fills it all in, new FreeNAS server. Uh, and you can edit and change all this as needed. Oh, by the way, if you change an invoice, like we sent that invoice, um, let's save it again. You do get invoice history. So if we look through, now that we've created a history, because this does happen, scopes of work change. Here's the original invoice we set them, but I forgot to add a service description. So then here's the revised one. And of course, we, it changed the rate when I, I did that. So now we can see both invoices and go back and edit them. So yes, it actually keeps invoice and quote history works the same way. If you've created revisions after you've sent them to the client, it has a log of those revisions. I don't think the client can see the all right, I just verify the client only sees the last version of the invoice. So they only see the latest version. So if you sent it, but you really quickly update it, they only see, as long as they didn't view it, they never seen the original version, just to throw that out there. Uh, so that's how you can invoice the tasks out. Uh, the other thing you can do with the task, like I said, we don't know how long this task will take. So we can actually go into the task and time it. So we can actually kick off things. And I should fix this. Copy files to new server. So uh, this is where that ta that I talked about that he had an app. It ties into this. Yeah, you just can hit here and uh, copy files new server or whatever you're doing. You can start and stop the tasks and uh, go from there. And uh, we got to cancel. Make sure we hit save. Running. Please note, I moved away from the site and I can go back to it later. And it's measuring out the duration that I do it until I come back and stop it. So you can actually kick off tasks uh, and not have to leave that web portal open. The, like I said, the, the app they have kind of gives you a little view of that, but pretty neat. Um, it Then when you're done with the project, you know how long the project took. then you have the time tracker, which pulls up here. So you can see each little thing in a pop-up window that are starting and stopping. And you can list out the tasks and filter them right here. This is actually a web view of what the uh, system looks like. So you can move this out over wherever you want on a screen, start and stop it. Um, we'll go ahead and stop this task. But you can see if you're working on a bunch of small client projects, it makes it really easy to be able to do that. You can click on here to see the project you're working on and we can resume working on it. Uh, we started using this for some of our hourly billing stuff because we can have the clients pulled up and if I'm working on a project, my guys can do each one of these and just hit start and stop the billing. Um, and then when it's all done, I'll show you what that looks like because we actually start and stopped it twice. So tasks. It lists the times out in here. So if we zoom again, stop, save. And what you're seeing here Whoops, I brought, I brought myself back to the dashboard one second. Let me back on tasks. Because I hit submit twice on the page. There we go. So here's the duration that we've done it on the start and stop. And we can go ahead and uh, invoice this task or add it to the existing invoice that was created based on this task. So if you save invoices as a draft, you can keep cumulatively building on those invoices, uh, which is actually a nice feature. So you, if you have all these billings, you can start the invoice, then you do it. And this is actually a lot of how we do billing. I'm probably gonna do a separate uh, video just on how we handle things, but this is one of the things we'll do. We'll keep cumulatively adding to an invoice until we know the project's over. And then maybe the next day, finish off that invoice. Cause we have like a little bunch of little things we're doing for a client. Uh, you can start and stop all the tasks and you can cumulatively just keep adding them all in here. So we're gonna add it to that invoice. And this is what I wanted to show you here at the end. Here is all the times you worked on it. So let's uh, save this invoice again. And what you're seeing is when you put three uh, pound signs in front of something. It has a really basic markup language. So here's all the times and they show up in like a smaller font. And if you ever want to customize things for a bigger font, you can also do this. Like this means uh, bold. And you see how that's now in bold. So you can do that, and that's what why it does uh, that on there. But uh, also, you may want to increase the billing time. We only, you know, we're uh, 
for two seconds. A lot of time you have minimums. I don't think they have a way to set that yet, but you can just override and type it in. So look, I know I cumulatively worked on it for 0.02 hours, but we have a minimum of a 15 minute billing time and you can do it, because uh, you gotta think about an hour. So 0.2, 15 minutes would be 0.25 and you can, you can type in decimals for the uh, hours in there. So, and then we'll go ahead and save this invoice, go back to our tasks and, uh, or even look at the project. So you can look at this project and you can start seeing all the tasks, the time spent on it um, until we hit our 50 hours total duration. I'm really impressed. It's got all this built in here for the project. Uh, and if you're using a few, if you know, you're doing web development, you time a lot of the uh, time you spent developing or coding. So it works really well, uh, works really well for that. Um, and the last thing I'll cover is the reports here. So you have an entire uh, list of reports for clients, aging, documents attached and stuff like that, payments, product, profit and loss. Uh, profit and loss, of course, is just based on expenses you entered uh, and the vendors you entered. Not not the most extensive system for that, but you can use it. We actually start we're probably gonna use it for some of our contractors. So we can attach a contractor as an expense to a particular uh, project or job that we hired out. Um, so you can track that. Uh, our business, the size that we're at, I, we're probably a little bit too extensive to use. We have a very uh, much more complicated ledger due to our size um, with lots of expenses and categories. So, uh, But if you're getting started, great place to start is here. You can always export it out, put in something else later, or just keep using it. Um, but like I said, it's a great system. I'm overall really happy with Invoice Ninja. Uh, the fact that it's open source and I can self-host it is something I love. Uh, the fact that they make it really easy for you to uh, set it up. And please, if you do host this yourself, like I said, think about the security uh, before you end up with a mess of getting hacked. Uh, it's not that the system's insecure, but if you put it on a unpatched system that you have public facing on the internet without proper filters in front of it, you could have problems. <laughs> um, the, the software itself, the Laravel framework, and everything these guys care about security they've done a great job um all the passwords think that are all hashed so from a back-end standpoint they built a really nice solid product uh with good security in mind but if you do self-host it you do have to think about those things but hey for eight bucks a month they'll host it for you so if you're getting started this is a really inexpensive way to get you going on stuff uh i guess the last thing i'll cover is interface uh, i didn't cover this little slide out here but they do have this uh, it remembers the last things you were working on uh which is kind of cool so wherever you were in the system, it, it's just a little history thing on there. But um, that's Invoice Ninja. It's it's an impressive system. Oh, we're starting to get some stuff in a dashboard. Uh, so you can see that invoices and payments, because we marked something paid, uh, it's a great system. Uh, it, you can grow into it. Like I said, we, we have a lot of uh, files in this, and it works really well. Uh, I'll do one last thing to show you the speed of it on ours. So sorry, I got to bl uh, blur things out. But for example, um, if I have to pull up a client that we're working on, it lets me, I can type in a client name and I know I have to blur these out because it's all of our uh, company names in there. It will index and pull up our clients, contacts, uh, quotes. So we did something for testing my test face. I can just type in part of their name over here and just pull it up and jump right to it. So having that at the top, um, let me land this on here. Oh, that's great. So it is fast to use. And like I said, we've got 6,000 something clients here and we have no problem. 6,000 clients, almost 21,000 invoices. It, it just blazes through everything here um, and lets you see everything. So great system. Uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I got the sign up link in there. Uh, it's like a referral link. So if you if you like to invoice Ninja, um, uh, go ahead and sign up off my referral link. It, it, they show me a little love. Uh, show them a little love for the system and sign up for the free one. No credit card required. Uh, you can just play with it and go, wow, this is open source was kind of what I said. And I'm not trying to dog on open source projects, but I haven't seen an open source invoicing project that was quite as good as this. Uh, so I, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. All right. Thanks for watching. If you liked the content here, like and subscribe.